Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna do another review that I'm excited to bring to you. This is gonna be the Seiko Sumo uh, SBDC033, I believe is the model number. Uh, this is the blue one. A lot of you guys like to affectionately call this one the Blue Mo model. And I know a lot of you guys have been excited for this review, as have I. You know, I've spoken for years about how the Seiko Monster really kind of, you know, changed my entire concept of Seiko and Japanese watches. And I know this is a watch that a lot of the Seiko community holds in high regard. So I'm sure um, you can imagine the amount of excitement and also kind of concern I had when I was getting it. You know, wondering if it would live up to the hype and if I'd like it as much as I thought. Because I'm so happy with my Seiko Monster, is this really worth the step up? Um, two things before we get started. One, customary wristwatch check. Today I'm wearing uh, my Casio G-Shock. Now, I'll do a review on this coming up. I've told you guys on so many videos that I recommend the G-Shock, yet I never own one, so I'm sick of being a hypocrite. I finally bought one I like. Um, beyond that though, forgive me if my hair starts falling <laughs> down in my face. I have a, a haircut later today and I've been putting it off Christmas and the work have been busy. So hopefully all that said guys, let's go ahead and just check this thing out. Alright guys, let's go ahead and get started. So here we have the SBDC033 Seiko Sumo. This is the blue dial, also affectionately known as the Blumo. Blue and Sumo. So I don't know where the watch community came up with that name. Just kidding. But uh, you know, this is a watch you guys have been telling me about for many, many years. And every time I talk about my monster, there was always, wow. Every time I talk about my monster, that sounds terrific. Every time I talk about my Seiko monster, um, there'd always be a couple of you guys in the comments that'd say, oh, but you really should have bought the Sumo. The Sumo is so much better. So you know what? I got curious enough. I figured I'd go ahead and give it a shot. And uh, I'm pretty happy with this watch. Now, um, just some basic stuff off the top. This is bigger than the Monster and the SKX for that matter. This is a 45 millimeter case. Um, strap size is 20 mil. Now this is not the original strap. I actually have a review on these. These are uh, Mr. Sailcloth Sailcloth straps. I'm going to show you the bracelet in a bit, but this is 20 mil. And by the way, that's actually one of the criticisms at a lot of the community levels at this watch. They think that a watch with 45 millimeters should have at least a 22 millimeter strap size. And you know, it doesn't bother me personally, but that said, I own and continue to have owned many different Rolexes where they've also been accused of having undersized bracelets on them or straps. Um, one that comes to mind too, which I actually haven't owned, but is leveled the same criticism, is the Rolex Deep Sea. So I personally am just so used to smaller straps on bigger cases that it doesn't bother me. But I know for a lot of you guys that that's a big issue for you, so I just wanted to call that out. Now, what are you getting by upgrading from, say, a Monster to this watch? Well, I have a second generation Monster, so mine only has, I say only, has the 4R36 movement in it, um, which is hacking and hand winding, but it only has a 40 hour-ish power reserve. I think it's about 42 hours. And accuracy is okay. Um, and for those of you that are still using watches with a 7S powered uh, movement in them, you're not getting hacking, you're not getting hand winding and your accuracy too is not terrific. Um, upgrading to a Sumo and you get a 6R15 caliber, you're not only gonna retain the hacking and hand winding features that you become familiar with on the 4R36 caliber, um, but you're also gonna be upgrading to a larger power reserve, in this case, 50 hours plus. Um, I've heard people getting 57 hours on these things, which I think is pretty nice. You're also gonna get better accuracy. I'm averaging about four seconds a day. Now, I do wanna point out though, I've heard it from multiple sources that Seiko does not actually regulate these watches from the factory. And as a result, your accuracy may vary, um, but they can all be regulated um, if you take them to a jeweler or you're comfortable doing it yourself and I know that these things can be regulated to chronometer spec So uh, bear in mind out of the box your results may vary, but you can definitely get them regulated to keep terrific time um, Also, if you're coming up from a monster, you're going to notice that there's no uh, day of the week You just get the date there, which I know a lot of people actually prefer for whatever reason And I think Seiko and Citizen are kind of to blame for this a lot of people associate cheap watches with having a date or a day of the week on them I like having the day of the week on there. I actually wouldn't mind it being on the Sumo, but I know a lot of you guys prefer the cleaner look of just having the date only. So you're getting a better movement. What else are you getting? Well, sadly, you're still getting a hard Lex crystal. And as you can see, it's getting all sorts of glare from the sun out there today. And, you know, I'd love to see Seiko do an AR coating on some other crystals. Um, you know, Rolex doesn't either, but I, I would definitely like to see a unit, unis, or a one side AR um, under this crystal so it wouldn't get scratched. I think that would be pretty nice. And I think for what this watch goes for, I think Sapphire should be, um, would be nice to see as well. What does this watch go for, by the way? I know you guys are going to ask me that. Well, 
it goes for sixty thousand dollars in or sixty thousand Japanese yen, which I know you're going to say, well, what does that really mean? Well, at the current exchange rate, which changes every single day, I'm trying to remember. I think it's about five hundred and seventy dollars. Um, figure you're going to be paying about five to seven hundred or five to six hundred dollars for this watch at the time of this video. Um, you might find a good deal, or you can definitely buy used, but that's the typical rate for a new one. So I would like to say, you know, if this is a $600 watch in Japan, you know, equivalency, I think they should have a sapphire crystal. I think that's something that I would like to see. And I also think at this price point, I think they should regulate the movement. I think, you know, it's not hard to find a Swiss watch with chronometer specs in this price range. Um, you know, these are things, if you've watched my other reviews of Seiko's, and you guys all know that I am a massive Seiko lover, um, I'm sure you're, you're kind of surprised to hear me say some of these criticisms, but I think at this price point this watch is playing at, I think Sapphire Crystal should be expected at the minimum. I'd like to see AR, but AR is not a must, but I do think Sapphire is something that I would expect, especially given that my Sarb, and a lot of the Sarb line has Sapphire Crystal, to me that they haven't put it on the SBDC, um, Lion of Sumo, I'm a little disappointed in that. As I said, I've already picked up some scratches on this. Um, that's one of my few complaints, by the way. Um, beyond what you're getting in the movement, though, you're also getting some nice upgrades for this, say, over a monster. You know, as we see with these Japanese spec watches, and if you guys have been watching my Sarb and uh, Sarg reviews, you know that the Japanese spec watches have incredible you know, case design and finishing. Um, you're of course gonna start off with that beautiful Seiko S signed crown. You get a lot of these beautiful kind of contours and curves. And the thing with these Japanese market watches that you get that you just don't see that often in other watches is you just get these impeccable transitions between finishes. You have this beautiful brush that transitions perfectly into a high polish and then you have like a brushed midline and then it goes back to a high polish transition on the bottom. And it is so well done that you would honestly think that this is just the way the metal naturally came because the transitions are absolutely perfect. The finishing on the case is exceptional. And the other thing that you're gonna to notice too is the bezel on this, in my mind, turns with a much better precision than lower end Seiko's do. This definitely feels much more solid. It's not playable as much as like a Monster is or an SKX. This is definitely a much nicer bezel in terms of feedback than lower end Seiko's. This honestly feels better than my uh, Omega Seamaster in terms of its action. It's a traditional bezel, you know, 60 clicks or 120 clicks, um, but you know, for keeping track of up to 60 minutes. Because it's a diving bezel, so I've said this in every video and I'm sure you guys are sick of me telling you. You just line the dot up with the minute hand and you can keep track of elapsed time. So if you decide to dive on this watch, which is good to 200 meters or 660 feet, you can keep track of your bottom time, your remaining oxygen, or you can track in your business meeting how long your boss is ranting on about random things that are boring you, which is probably what it's gonna be used for most as a desk diver in corporate America or corporate Japan or wherever else you may be. Um, this is one of the newer Sumos, so you'll notice right here uh, it has a little, the symbol for prospects. That's uh, Seiko's symbol for the professional line of watches. It is of course automatic and it mentions that it's a diver to 200 meters, which is up roughly 660 feet, I believe plus or minus. Um, it also mentions that it is made in Japan and it has the 6R15 caliber. So uh, the bezel is awesome. The luminescence is awesome, which you would expect. Although I have to say, I don't know that it's any better than the Monster, but the Monster is incredible. So even putting it in the same ballpark as the Monster is you know, actually quite a compliment. Um, as you would expect to, they've done an awesome job on the case back. Um, Air Diver, 200 meters. You have the Prospect logo. You have the beautiful Tsunami Wave, which for those of you living in Japan, I'm not sure you guys feel about tsunamis anymore as I know there's been some, you know, unfortunately large natural disasters relating to tsunamis in recent years. Um, you know, where I live, tsunamis are a rare thing. And of course, I think it's a beautiful little detail. And I wish Rolex would bother to do this kind of dedication to their case backs. Actually, I have one of my Rolexes near me. So, you know, here's the back of my Explorer too. Which case back would you rather have, right? Anyway, so beautiful case back. Again, the case itself is finished to a phenomenal degree. And um, you get even, even the crown just feels wonderful. Um, it is offset four o'clock, screw down as you would expect. First position is winding. Second position changes the date. And third position, hacking.
beautiful um, action, by the way, too. It feels very refined as you're winding it and as you're uh, rotating the hands, too. Definitely feels like it's very well done. Now, I know you guys are going to ask me, well, obviously, this isn't the original bracelet. What's the original bracelet look like? The original bracelet, honestly, is another disappointment for me. So here's the original bracelet. Um, you know, it's mostly brushed. There's a little bit of high polish on either side flanking the center links. You know, it's, it's nice, it's solid, um, but it's got the cheap standard class with a safety and deployment uh, dual trigger. If you guys have a Monster, or actually most Seiko dive watches, they have this bracelet on them, and like the Monster as well, you get a diving extension. Uh, this bracelet is something else that I think they should have done better. Um, you know, it works, it's great, and um, you know, it's, as a functional tool, it's terrific. And if you were going to throw this against a 1990s Rolex, you know, which obviously there's no reason you should, um, this would still be a better bracelet. But I, again, at $600, you know, I think about my SARBs and the SARGs that I've reviewed. They had a nice machined clasp that folded over here. I think on this watch at this price point, I think Seiko could have done better. Um, the end links, of course, you guys are going to ask as well. They are also solid. They're very well done. And um, I, know, I don't know if you guys have ever seen Seiko spring bars. Seiko has a very hefty style of spring bar, which you may not be able to tell on camera, but Seiko uses enormous spring bars. They're not standard spring bars, by the way, so be careful and don't lose these. But, you know, the bracelet's totally functional. If anything, I think I actually prefer the bracelet on my Monster stylistically. You know, the bracelet's okay, and it does the job, but I think for, you know, around $600, I think Seiko could have done one of their nicer ones that you see on, like, a Sarb or a Sarg. I would have liked to have seen that. So, um, overall, awesome watch. I like it a lot. Um, the finishing is impeccable. I love the S on the crown. The dial is beautiful. As you can see, though, it, it looks kind of dark in certain light. Sometimes you pick up on the blue, sometimes it almost looks black. Um, the dial is very well finished, it has a nice little texture to the dial. And, you know, overall it's just a beautiful watch. Now, I do have some criticisms again though, and I think some of this is because, you know, my Monster is so good that I think I had extra, extra expectations for this watch. And in comparison to a Monster, you're getting the same depth rating, you're still getting hacking and hand winding. You're paying for, you know, the nicer finishing on the case, and... Honestly, that's really about it. You're paying for the better movement, which, you know, again, you're getting the benefit of power reserve and you're getting the benefit of better accuracy out of the box. Now, is it worth an upgrade from a monster? Honestly, I really struggle to say it is. Um, I love this watch. I plan on keeping this watch a long time. Um, but, you know, to say that you're getting that much extra value, if you really value the extra finishing and you really want the extra power reserve, um, you know, then this is a watch for you because you could actually, you know, make a monster for our caliber as accurate as this watch without a problem if you knew how to regulate it correctly. Um, beyond that, though, I don't really know what extra value you're getting. Um, again, the bracelet to me is a toss up with a monster. It's not really a better bracelet. I think the reason you would consider this watch over a monster is it's a bigger case size. I love the 45 millimeter case size. And, you know, again, you, you like the extra finishing and this is just a watch you like. This is obviously a much more unoffensive style than like a Monster would be. This is a much more traditionally styled watch. And, you know, at $600, I think it's actually an extremely fair price. If anything, as with all Seikos, I think it's actually underpriced. But since I have so much experience with Seiko, I think my expectations were a little bit higher. And I would, again, like to see Sapphire. I'd like to see a better bracelet on it as well. Um, and I think they should have regulated it from the factory. But beyond that, I, this is me nitpicking because I know what Seiko is capable of. Um, competing with other watches on this price point, this is a stellar watch, and I, comparing it to other watches, this would be my first choice for the price point that it plays in. Now on the wrist, again, I have um, a wrist that's just under seven inches, if you guys are familiar with my channel. So it fills out nicely. The lugs are really long, so it actually shows up on the wrist really well. It's a heavy watch and um, it feels very substantial. And if you guys you know, know my passion for all things heavy, especially it's why I got into Bright Links too for a while, um, you'll know that this watch very much speaks to me. And I love you know, how thick it is. I love how it curves and it hugs your wrist. It's very comfortable to wear. And um, overall, it's a wonderful, wonderful watch. So 
Um, I guess my only caveats again to you guys looking up one of these, if you're familiar with some of the lower end watches, if you have an SKX you're looking to upgrade, um, this is a major step up over an SKX. If you have a monster you're looking to upgrade, you know, um, you're getting a bigger case which wears nicer if you have a bigger wrist like, uh, or you're just bigger profile like I am. I like the size of this better than the monster. You're getting a better movement and you're getting a more traditionally styled uh, watch. And you know, the finishing on the crown and the case and everything is just that much better and the action of the bezel is tremendous. Um, if I were to compare this to like a Rolex Submariner from the 90s, I'd say that this is every bit as good of a watch and I would actually buy this over a sub from the 90s. Um, but again, knowing what I know about Seiko, I have a couple of things that I think are, I wish they would have done better. But overall, love this watch as I've said, I've talked on too much. I would definitely recommend one, um, just with those caveats in mind. So with all that said guys, let's go ahead and we'll jump back. Welcome back guys, I really hope you enjoyed the review. So as you can see, I mean the watch is done extremely well, the finishing is top notch. The crown action, everything on the watch is very, very well done. The bezel too just has that kind of high precision feel to it. Um, forgive me, my hair keeps falling in my face. Um, but uh, you know, it's definitely one of those those watches that definitely you know hits well above its price point. And I think for what they're asking for, which currently at the time of this video is sixty thousand Japanese yen, um, U.S. dollar wise, that's typically I believe the current version rate that's just under six hundred dollars, like five seventy something to that effect which of course by the time you guys see this may change. Um, massively underpriced for what it is. Uh, you know, I, I think it's every bit as good of a watch for most people as a Rolex Submariner would be. I say that as a former owner and owner of multiple Rolexes now. Um, my only real concerns with this watch, as I mentioned, are I think the bracelet should be nicer for the price point, if I'm honest. And I also really wish they would have used Sapphire because I already have a couple scratches on the hard legs. Um, other than that, I really have no complaints. I think it's an awesome watch. And um, I guess the next question would be, is it worth a step up from a monster? You know, the finishing on it definitely is done in a level above. Uh, the bracelet, you know, I think the bracelet's pretty much equal. If anything, I actually like the bracelet on my monster better. Um, but the finishing is definitely notch above, the movement's a step above. Um, if you're totally happy with a monster now, I don't feel like you're gonna feel like you're getting much more out of this watch. But if you're looking to buy a, just a general Seiko diver and you're not a current owner, um, I would totally recommend this watch. I think this is all the watch you'd ever really need from a Seiko diver. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I'll be sure to catch you guys in the next video if you make sure to subscribe to me. Um, please leave me you know, questions, comments, feedback below. I've been so busy lately that please forgive me if I don't get a chance to respond to your questions, but I do appreciate them and I know the community, we all get to get together and comment on each other's questions, so it's a great little collaboration we have going on. And with all that said guys, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up and uh, again, I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you guys so much and have an awesome day.